about to see the red light go on. And it goes out now, and it's... Uh, That's it why Martin Gambling was aimed over <laughs> there, because he's gone past about five cars already. The red eclipse up the inside, but it's the Kronos that leads, isn't it, from the uh, from Collingwood's uh, uh, eclipse. Uh, one of the Mev extra sets has made a rapid start. That's, uh, that's Stuart Much with the turbocharged extra set. Was briefly third, now shaken down to fourth. <laughs> and Landon and Sayana. And Collingwood <laughs> must be about ninth, I should think. Or, uh, gambling, uh, yeah. Gambling, sorry. Ninth yeah. or tenth from the back. Yeah, that's right. He'd uh, had a great start. He was making up more places on the mental finish. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Tenth. Tenth, yeah. <laughs> uh, through, through there. So, yes, you're about right. Turning their way out of the link onto the... Uh, hang straight then for the first one. These are pretty rapid, these cars. 53, Andy Hiney and the Kronos it is that leads. Number 11, Paul Collingwood in second. In practice, it was a 1 minute 9.622 for Andy Hiney, a shade under 96 miles an hour for a lap time. It's impressive in a home-built car, isn't it? It certainly is, and uh, that was underneath his own lap record from 2020, which was a 111.35. So I suspect we'll see the lap record go today. There's another sixth, place made up by uh, Gambling. I think he's sixth now from the back of the grid, having aimed the car about 30 degrees to the right. And uh, it seems to have worked. Ooh, Someone's in trouble. Someone is in trouble. It's the 44 car. That's Marcus Roskill, who seems to have lost... Uh, power there by the looks of it. He's trying to get it restarted. I think he has managed to do so and he'll get himself back into the race but he's now right at the back of the field. So it's highly leading by nine tenths of a second at the end of the first lap and there is Martin Gambling going up to fourth place now. Okay, he's just demoted Stuart Much with the uh, the MEV Exocet R. Yeah, so Stuart Much leading Class C. Neil Turner it is in the cage of number one that is leading, there he is, the white cage from the black roll cage that is leading in Class B. So he made a good start there because uh, it was uh, Gary Goodyear on pole in the red uh, Catrum S3, number 50, and he obviously has dropped back a little bit off the start line. as Roskill, he goes through as he uh, tries to recover from that uh, brief drama at club a lap ago. Twenty stay here again at Silverstone. Nice, warm, sunny. Uh, chilly this morning when we turned up, yeah. but uh, it's uh, uh, as uh, often as perfect racing conditions. Certainly has, so that's uh, Neil Turner now ahead of Stuart Much. Then Stuart Much is going to try and come back to him, and there you can see the car just behind him, that red cage with the black nose, that is Gary Goodyear. So Bush has got back ahead of Turner, and we're going to get the two Caterhams at the front of Class B together. Goodyear seems to carry a lot more speed through Abbey that time. and might be about to attack into Village. We kind of dis lost him off to the left-hand side of our pictures there, but we'll see if Gary Goodyear did indeed make it through in just a moment or so, I think, as they head off uh, towards the hangers rate. No, he didn't. So it's Stuart Much there fourth. Fifth is Neil Turner and sixth is uh, Gary Goodyear returning to uh, Sports Specials. He was a, a long-time competitor in uh, kit cars a number of years ago. Yep, and uh, that battle here between Stuart Much with the, the MEV that uh, runs uh, the company that puts those cars together. And uh, so behind Freaky Parts, there's uh, higher deals available, a new car on the stock, I understand, for 2025. And gainly looking machine, but um, really rapid. And uh, some, some, some of them run with wings on the back, some don't, for what benefit that confers. But uh, uh, very interesting. Wheel to wheel through here, 27. Well, that's Andrew Hayward. Hayward yeah. yeah, so he, that's important because he's leading the championship going into this weekend, but he might lose out to his predecessor, or one of his predecessors, uh, Stuart Thompson, once again, as they are fighting for what is third place within the class and eighth place overall. There's some more of the Mevs. I think we're in kind of uh, Mickey Scott and Gerard O'Donoghue territory here, aren't yep. we? Yes, it's 78 Warren Vesey today. He has, was out in a, a Mev at the last meeting, I think, but he's out in the Silver Phoenix today. There's uh, John Elsie, our photographer, in action down there at the link, capturing the uh, action through the, uh, the right-hander. She did some excellent work. Do check it out on the 750 Motor Club website and uh, social media feeds after the meeting. But uh, there we can see 
the battle for fifth position. Fifth position, Stuart Murch with Neil Turner and Gary Goodyear, the two Class B leaders right behind him. Andy Hindley, meanwhile, has set the fastest lap of the race, a 109.411. He's been quicker than he went in qualifying now, so I actually think he's probably over 96 miles an hour that lap. And he uh, beats his lap record by nearly two seconds from wow. uh, four years ago. That's really going some... Uh, and we've seen these lap times improving uh, all season. Yeah, they plundered the records at, um, at Thruxton. Yes, they, they did. Well inside 1 minute 20 for the 2.3 mile circuit. Quite remarkable. Yeah. They're really, really rapid, uh, these cars. They're producing uh, lap times that are probably quicker than uh, Formula Ford or something like that. There we can see the Class B lead battle going through again. But further back is uh, Stuart Thompson, who's that he's about seven seconds behind the battle for first and second that we see here, just behind uh, Stuart Murch in the MEV, number seven. But it's number 53, Andy Hiley, that still leads from number 11, Paul Collingwood. Number 64, Anton Landon, is third, just about to come across the line. And he's got Martin Gambling right behind him, so it might be a good opportunity to look at the battle for third place, which is just going into Abbey Corner now, because we've got Anton Landon with Martin Gambling right with him, I can see, out of our commentary box window as we were watching the battle a bit further back. There it is. Coming down to Village now, the hairpin of Martin Gambling up on the inside of Anton Landon for third place, and he goes through in the number 99 car. And he also has some non-standard error on the back of that eclipse. Uh, he gets ahead of the Cyana of, uh, of Landon up into third place from the back of the grid, but he's got 10 seconds or so to make up on the leading two. In answer to the question you almost posed, uh, Ian, um, Clive Hudson's new that record at Thruxton was almost four seconds quicker than mm. the predecessor. Uh, ended up with 119.578, 106.58 miles an hour average for the uh, Hampshire Airfield circuit. Yeah, they, they are really, really impressive uh, lap times that these sports special cars, the Flanders coming doing. back at gambling. They're side by side through Vale and uh, into Club Corner. And into the second apex, that um, iridescent kind of Red coloured uh, car of gambling, not as quick but looks things in a straight line as the Cyana. Cyana's got a bit more grunt, but uh, gambling's got certainly some good handling. It certainly does, down towards Village again, and this is where he got through last time, but uh, not able to repeat that London Wise to his attack from the previous lap, of course. But he might wriggle through in this little twisty section that it's takes him back it. onto the hang straight. He has done, I think. Yep, there he goes. Fires it out onto the, uh, the hangar. So along the hangar straight they go, with seven minutes of the race left to go. We're working lap number seven. Again, Landon probably with a bit more straight line speed, pulls out of the slipstream, goes to the outside line. He's being made to driven around the outside of, uh, drive around the outside Can't of Stowe. He breaks later. He did break later. Uh, and that's where maybe where that eclipse has an advantage on the brakes, possibly. Mm. And... Uh, is able to maintain the Has position. A smaller frontal area as well, which probably helps uh, down the uh, down the hangar. In terms of the best lap times, Gambling's in a 110.957, and Landon's best is a 112.110. So, uh, Gambling theoretically is more than a second faster than uh, than Landon's car. As they turn on to the eighth lap of the race now, still Andy Hiley with the best lap of the race. He leads by 3.8 seconds, which is why we're not looking at the leaders too much, because they are uh, well out in front of the rest, not particularly close to one another. Yeah, it's not unusual for uh, Andy Hiley to be um, well ahead. So racing uh, the Kronos uh, and its predecessor, Tadek, uh, for many a long year and uh, he knows them inside out he drives them incredibly quickly and uh, makes very few mistakes indeed and uh, gambling who raced in low costs and the compact cup uh, before he uh, picked up this eclipse a few years ago now he's been racing it probably five or I oh, know, even more than that, I think seven or eight years probably he's been racing it. I seem to recall him. Has his colour changed in that time? Well, I think it's always been red. It may not have been the same red, but it's mm. been, been been a basically red colour. I think there are about six eclipses in total. Yeah. Um, 
one took a big whack here a few years ago. You can see that the putty coloured one that Clive um, Hudson in campaigns. Works development guy in a better comment. You just sense now that gambling is just easing away a little bit from uh, from Lander, but he's in the infield. He has uh, he, he's he's much uh, more fluid. His lines through there. He, can t he, he, he maintains more momentum at that part, which, is where, which he needs to do. He doesn't have to run to the straight. Collingwood, line. Collingwood's slow. He's got his hand in the air. The man that was in second place is about to lose that because gambling is going to come up to pass him. So. Paul Collingwood's car has broken, it would seem. There's an eclipse of the eclipses now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, I'm trying to see if there's anything obvious broken on it, but it's just uh, it's like it's conked out pretty much. It's just going to cruise or coast towards the pit lane. Entrance. Second DNF uh, of the season for Collingwood. He also had a failure at Thruxton as well in the second of the races there. There is a scrap going on a bit further back. Ooh, that's, that hasn't that worked at all. Uh, for the number 69 of Gerard O'Donoghue, who's in 14th position. They, um, they do understeer, don't they, when, there's, um, when, when the front wheels are locked? Yeah, <laughs> certainly do. So Marcus Roskill, though, was also in, involved there, and he's recovering, of course, after that incident where we had to seemingly turn the car off and on again uh, through club on the opening lap of the race. But he now is under threat from that's Mickey Scott who had got ahead of and has now got back ahead of him on the way into Stoke and just behind them you've got 38 uh, Jamie Brachier in the ex Tony Southgate car Tony, Tony Southgate the president of the 750 Motor Club Bridget Smart has also raced that car since then as Marcus Roskill is yep up on the inside of Mickey Scott to take that place back so a nice little dice going on there between the cars in two different classes Roskill in class B and, uh, and Mickey's got one of the Class C cars. Here yeah, is that's another one of those dices where the cars are good in different parts of the circuit, yes. so it ends up as being a, a really tight battle. The 18 car being lapped there is that of uh, Colin Benham, the CB Phoenix. Colin, another former champion in uh, sports specials of uh, a few years ago. Not yeah, in that particular back. car. So London it is that is going through a shot there in third place. So it's highly leading by 19 seconds from gambling. It's about a second then between gambling and London. Uh, and there is uh, Andrew Hayward, who is still fourth behind Stuart Thompson in third within Class B. And Warren Vesey, is he gaining on them? It looked like he might be, because he did a personal best lap that time through to close by about three tenths of a second. There is the battle for the Class B lead as well. Just in behind Stuart Much, the Class C leader. Uh, but Neil Turner is trying to get back ahead of the Mev in his catering, because if he can get a car between himself and uh, Gary Goodyear, his nearest rival in that class, that would be very much to his advantage. So Turner is just clipping the kerb there on the way towards the link. Oh, and for second place, it's side by side all of a sudden. I wonder if Gambling's got a bit of a problem because he seems relatively slow at this part of the circuit a lap ago. Yeah, momentum just seems to, uh, to ebb away. Yeah, and Landon has got back through to what second position now after the demise of Paul yeah. Collingwood. Minute maybe it's something you know, intermittent, uh, maybe something that. Uh, Caused the car to do so little in qualifying, but he's, he's back on it. Yeah. This is the part of the circuit where he's quick. It is. Uh, so it's, uh, and there's the battle involving Marcus Roskill and uh, Jamie Brachin, number 38. They're being caught, and about to be lapped by these cars. Andy Hiley, meanwhile, is, I think, about to go on to his uh, final uh, lap of the race. The race leader, he's somewhere in front of these. I'm trying to spot where he is on the and track. Landon moving fact. away from gambling, so gambling, I think, does have a problem. Yeah, Heidi's just gone across the line to complete lap 12 now and go on to his last lap with 37 I seconds I to go. I saw a lick of flame from the back of the gambling car, but it might just be an overrun yeah. uh, down into Stowe. Landon's got that position. He's working his way through the lap runners. There's Roskill behind him. Yeah, they passed the last lap ball, so they go on to the final lap as well. But yeah, not all not right, clearly, with uh, Gambling's number 99 car. So neither of the clips is on uh, full song. Going to get caught by Stuart Much, 
not at this rate. Too much. No. Fourth place in car number seven, class leading. Merv Exocet R. And gambling still able to get past those uh, slower class uh, B cars. Landon picking his way through the traffic as well. Past Alan Robinson's number 26 car. Past, I think that's Mickey Scott's. May have those cars on two different laps as well. We were just looking for Andy Hyde. He's just uh, turning his way through Stowe Corner now ahead of this this group. So he'll be heading to the, towards the chequered flag surely. But Landon now looking pretty secure in second place. Here is Andy Hyde. First time we've seen him in uh, several laps. He's turning his way through Club Corner for the final time. Number 53, Andy Hyde in the Kronos comes through to take the chequered flag and win round number nine of the Freaky Park Sports Specials Championship. That is his seventh victory of the season. The only time he's been, well, he's not been beaten because the only time he's not won the race is when uh, he didn't go to Snetterton and Paul Collingwood won both of the races there. So highly victorious again, seven from seven. Certainly looking good for the Class A Championship, even if he's going to be, might be stopping for the overall honours by a lack of cars in his class. Uh, so Landon has taken second, Gambling has taken third. I think the only three cars that are on the leading lap that still need to finish then are the two Class B leaders and the Class C leader that should be coming through shortly. They are uh, yet to come through. They're just down at Stowe Corner now, I reckon. Neil Turner and Stuart Much and Gary Goodyear. Uh, they will be among the next cars to come through at the end of this race. Uh, there is a back marking car in there. Yeah, it's Stuart Butch who's going to get uh, fourth place. Snatches it on the line. But Neil Turner, he's very happy to have won Class B from Gary Goodyear by about uh, two or three tenths of a second. Very close between those two. Catrums, a, a good battle between those two in that one. And I think that's everyone else that has finished the race. So it was Andrew Hayward who did finish behind uh, Stuart Thompson. So fourth place for him. Uh, today, so not the haul he might have liked of Class B points. Let's have a look at the result of this, the final race before the lunch break. Andy Hiley it was that took the win in the Kronos HR1S in car 53 after a 13 lap race. Second to number 64, Anton Landon in the Siena, 19 and a half seconds adrift. Third number 99, Martin Gambling hanging on in the Eclipse. Fourth number seven, Stuart Much, who won Class C for the Mevs. Fifth number one, Neil Turner, who won Class B. From second place in that class, number 50, Gary Goodyear, and third place in that class, number 30, Stuart Thompson, who was a, a lap down on Hiley. Then eighth overall was 27, Andrew Hayward. Ninth overall, 78, Warren Vesey. And tenth overall, number 24, Marcus Crook, ahead of Mickey Scott, Marcus Roskill, Jamie Bracher, and Gerard O'Donoghue. With uh, Colin Benham, Sylvia Much, and Alan Robinson, the only other finishers with Paul Collingwood, retiring to the pits. Uh, a few laps before the end but that brings to an end this morning's racing here at Silverstone we uh, do have five more races to come after the lunch we're back underway around about 1.40 with the two hour race for the Tikiwa Club Enduro Championship followed by the five club MX5 Cup race parts historic 750 formula series PBS Breaks Hot Hats Championship and the Freaky Park Sports Specials Championship for its second race to round out the weekend of racing here it's at Silverstone. About 45 minutes, then, yeah. Something like that, yeah, yeah. About 45 minutes for the marshals and for everyone else to, to grab some lunch. So, very shortly, we will be heading down to uh, Park Fermi to hear from uh, Kieran McGinley. He's also going to keep uh, everyone on the live stream entertained through the, the lunch break as well, having a bit of a pit walk. Let's head down to him now, though. And that brings an end to our uh, sports specials there. And uh, we have our overall and class A winner in Andy Hiley. Andy, you're on your own out there, but my goodness, what a machine you've got. Oh, uh, yeah, I was surprised. The first couple of laps, I didn't think I was pulling away from him much. And then uh, gap opened up a bit, and then it started to really open up. I don't know if Paul decided to save his tyres for the next race or what, I'm not sure. But, yeah, it all went very well in the end, didn't it? Uh, it was that a part of your strategy towards the end, just save the tyres for the next one? Yeah, I was slowing up to save the, well, knock a little bit of temperature out of it as well, as well as save the tyres, yeah. I mean, around the international track, how is your machine around here? Oh, it's a good car around here. It works really well in high-speed stuff. <laughs> so your Kronos works pretty well then, is what you're saying? Yeah, it does. It works very well, yeah. <laughs> so what are you taking to this afternoon then? What am I taking to the afternoon? Um, much of the same. Try the same again. Work the first time, should work the second time, right? That's the way I see it, yes. <laughs>
Great stuff. Andy, thank you for the chat and go and enjoy your lunch. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andy. And uh, let's have a chat now to our uh, Class B winner in uh, Neil Turner, although the number one isn't here. Stuart Much is here, though, so we'll have a chat to Stuart instead. Stuart, Class C winner, congratulations. How is that for you? Hot. Yeah, it's a warm morning and uh, it's hot out there. But, yeah, it was, it was really good. Uh, I had a really good race with Neil and um, Gary behind me. Um, they were keeping me keen, keeping me really honest and uh, every little mistake they picked up on. Neil got around me a couple of times and I just had to keep backing and back up to, to Gary to, to distract him to, so I could get away. But yeah, the car worked, car worked really well. The, um, the BS Motorsport engine worked fantastically with the gearbox conversion as well. So yeah, really happy. So good battling, class victory. So more of the same this afternoon then? I hope so, yeah. I need to get some, uh, some points on the board after, after an unfortunate incident at Cadwell. Um, Men, men, I've dropped a few points, but um, there's the, the championship um, overall lead up for, up for grabs, I think. Not far off. Yeah, absolutely. And a strong showing from you today will uh, will help you out there, won't it? I hope so, yes. Yeah, we just need more cars on the grid so we can uh, score more points. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're watching this and you want, uh, want to get out there... <laughs> yes, yeah, buy a Mev and come race with us. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, buy a Mev, come race with us. Yeah. Absolutely, and uh, help Stuart score some more points. Yep. Fantastic. <laughs> there you go. That's the advert done, Stuart. Congratulations. Go and enjoy your lunch. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank you very much. And, uh, well, let's have a look here. Neil Turner, I can't see him, so uh, I'm sure I'll try and catch up with him in a lunch break. In the meantime, though, we're going to go into a lunch break, but when we come back, we're going to go for a little bit of a pit walk and see who we can find, who we can collar, and who actually wants to speak to me. Uh, we'll be back after the ad break. <laughs> 